Hello everybody, welcome to the Rebel Roundup of G-Man Division 4. I've uh, got all six games for you today. First up, we've got Buford T. Justice's Crematorium Crew versus Hindi's Lounging Lizards. We start with a brilliant coaching, extra reel for Buford T. Justice. Catches the kickoff. Not bad. Um, Hindi, Hindi's Lizard Men won the kickoff and chose to kick to Buford T. Justice's team. Um, looks like we haven't got any inducements. For 13 men versus 11. So risky. Risky for Hindi, this kind of TV with only 11 men. And getting hit by Mighty Blow a fair amount and piling on. Um, he's going to have to get decent dice to be the shot here, probably. Few guard. Dirty player. Strength of his own, though. Hmm, interesting. So, turn two for the uh, Lizards. And Buford T. Justice has got everybody based. And it looks like he's about to lose the ball as well. Well, oh, fails the second GFI. Gets the both down from the defenseless ghoul. So yeah, every, everyone's based up. And this is the problem, isn't it, with it, against Lizards? They can just base you up and they're so strong. It's hard to do anything. Wow, ballsy pick up there from Hindi. Wow, and dodge away. <laughs> That's crazy. I wouldn't have even tried that. Um, now I don't say crazy as in it was a bad decision, but uh, it was a it was a crazy result, wasn't it? Unbelievable. Gonna be very hard for Buford T Justice to uh, to get back into it now. Just a push. There's gonna be three plus, two plus. Two plus again, and no tackle. Yep, this is looking pretty bad. And as we skip to turn eight here, you can see the lizards have beaten up the undead, killed a ghoul, bludge step, tackle ghoul, a couple of KOs, a couple of send offs. But um, yeah, the, the undead have been absolutely just battered and. Uh, <laughs> Another one, and Hindi has managed to get the handoff to a uh, to a Saurus there as well. So, you know, absolute textbook half there for Hindi. You know, like to be fair, all of his TVs on the pitch, so he has got a, a better team than Buford T Justice. But um, all that mighty blow was pretty scary for him to deal with. We'll start the second half, a high kick, doesn't really matter. It gives him a free chance to catch with a Saurus though. <laughs> he doesn't make it, but I think that, that was the right thing, that's what I would have done. Um, so yeah, he's, he's only got 10 players for this drive, but the undead are down to 9. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's brutal, isn't it? That is absolutely brutal. I, I can't see a win for the uh, the undead here. Probably just get dominated for the rest of the half. So yeah, he's um, he's just played it safe. Hindi got the ball on a on a rookie Saurus, getting him halfway at the block, running around, not really doing anything. He has taken a cans. A niggle. Ooh. So actually, a pretty big. Pretty big injury there. On a break tackle dodge, about to get block Saurus. So a pretty big injury he's taken. And now he's making his push down the side. Turn eleven. And he takes the score on turn thirteen. They're going for the three nil. <laughs> Dirty Dino. Dirty Dino going for the three nil. Had the, had the game on lockdown. I think I would have kept it locked down purely because 
okay, you might get a third one, you might get another skill, but he's giving away mighty blow hits here, isn't he? A lot of mighty blow hits. And I don't know, that seems really greedy. I think I would have I think I'd absolutely just kept them locked down there. And I would um I'd have stalled out for the 2-0, but there you go, that's just my opinion. And we've got nice. I mean, to be fair, even getting the blocks back, it's not that great, is it, for uh, the Buford T Justice here. So turn 16, and Buford T Justice has gone for the touchdown. He's got the he's got the edge four guy, but there is a break tackle down right next to him, so. Gets two dice, gets the knockdown. Oh, he's got he's got ball base. It's interesting they both tried to kind of you know, score and stuff. <laughs> I would have definitely been happy with just locking down the uh locking them down at midfield and stalling out for the two. But he hasn't been punished, Hindi. He's still just got the one. But it's a big cast, though, isn't it? Maybe. Oh, wow. Minus agility. A mummy with minus agility is the worst. <laughs> Wouldn't have really minded that one, would he? But Yeah, so he's basing everyone to make it, make the score hard, which... I don't know, I just... I would have been more concerned about putting Pom and fouling the Poms. He didn't take a random cast in the last turn. You know, that, that's just me, though. I mean, fair enough. He's won 2-0, though. So, like, it's not even about... about just protecting the team at the cost of the result. He had the result. So I think that would have been absolutely fine to have... Uh, to have just gone for the 2-0. But he went for the 3. Um, <laughs> and went for the 2... He stopped the 2-1 as well. So fair play to Hindi. Got MVP on the guy who scored. So a great result. And... Uh, Buford T just has got a, a skill up on the goal. So they both got somebody on the way to replacing the guys they lost. To be honest, a bludge break tackle, Saurus might be kept even with a niggle might he? So yeah, that was that was that. We've got 42 to 46 blocks. 23, 34, 26. So a lot of pushes there for Buford T Justice. As you can see, he's re-rolled. Frustration re-rolled a couple of them. Or maybe they were hitting the ball. Some of them were. Um, 33, 28, 36. So quite a lot of pals there for Hindi. And uh, yeah, that's it. So a great result for Hindi there. Next up, we've got Holly Boys Ready Lizard 1 versus the Coaches Tumbling Dice. Oh, so it starts with a perfect defence. Um, Hoily Boy won the won the toss and chose to kick. Um, Hoily Boy with the lizards to coach with the woodies. Um, you know, obviously this matchup greatly favours woodies. Um, Hoily Boy must one of these must be a journeyman and the other must be a merc. So he's got twelve players. Um, only eleven for the coach, but yeah, woodies versus lizards. But it's still tricky, isn't it? You know, that's the thing, people. People love to act like this match is unwinnable for the for the lizards, and it really isn't. And it's the same as claw teams versus lizards. It, you know, people act like that is unwinnable for the lizards, but it, it comes down to the dice rolls a lot. Um, you know, if if claw rolls badly against lizards, it struggles, and if woodies, uh, you know, just get beaten up a bit. It, at this kind of TV, it's harder because they've got loads of dodge, so it's hard for them to get beaten up, particularly, but it still can happen, can't it? And there's a, an incredible super skink here, so there's a good chance of a one turn for Hoily Boy, absolutely. So turn four, and the lizards have made four removals. Woodies are down to only seven players, which is six elves in a tree, isn't it? So. It's getting tricky for them now to keep the ball protected. And, you know, they've been switching sides a bit. The the, the lizard men, they'll have the movement to, to just follow them around, haven't they? So while wood elves can push and pull bash teams quite a bit, they can't. They don't really get the same same thing. Uh, lizard men do it as well to, to other bash teams. 
where they, they kind of you know go one side then the other then the other and eventually one team gets out of position well the Wood Elves really haven't been able to do it they've been trying to do it but you know obviously Hoyley Boy's playing well and uh, not letting it happen we can get a surf here can't we if he wants it will he go for it it looks like he will with the position of that guard doesn't it Doesn't need the assist though. Oh, he does because there's guard there. Ah, yep. He is going for it. So he powers the dancer and then gets two assists for the sir. Very nice. A little bit of a. He might go for the pass here, might he? No, he's, he has based him. But it's looking really, really bad for the coach, actually. No injury. No injury on the server. So, yeah, he goes for the handoff. He didn't even need to pass. He could just hand off to him. Fails the handoff. And makes the re-roll. Oh, and then 1 in 36 on the dodge. Into a KO. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's horribly unlucky, isn't it? Wow. That is horribly unlucky. And now, with uh, with three turns left, there's a chance for Hoyley Boy to, to score. I mean, obviously, he mostly just wants to defend. But there's a chance of him getting a, getting a counter score here. There being so few woodies on the pitch. <laughs> and, yeah, he, he would have had the chance there to do something, but... Uh, he did, you know, Hoyley Boy did get the ball recovered and the Edge 5, movement 9 guy, is away. Edge 5 is a little bit excessive, isn't it, for a for a stunty player. But he's got the ball. He's away and the half's going to be 1-0 here. He's going to get the three dice hit on the dancer first, which makes an awful lot of sense. Doesn't kill him. Everyone's sad. That's the GFI to score. So yeah, huge. Just it was it was the removals, wasn't it? And and the movement and strength of the lizards that, that went for that. You know, obviously I uh, I made a bunch of removals versus the Wood Elves in my game, but got burned still. Um, but the, the just the sheer movement and agility of the the, the agility of the skink, the movement of the whole team is. It's quite a different thing for uh, lizards, isn't it? So now, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players. So it's not that bad actually. He, he did really well with the KO rolls. He didn't have a uh, he didn't have a blood riser babe. That was just sheer good dice to get four out of five back. Uh, the cast of alignments and nobody cares. But now this is this is tricky though, isn't it? Because there's a dancer here who's strength four with only movement seven though with. Um, Tackle, no, not tackle. Oh, strip, mighty blonde plus strength. So yeah, but it's funny how he's got one movement seven, one movement nine. Movement nine dancer, you know, obviously would have been better with tackle, but I think it's absolutely right to take the movement and then build a build a super player later on. So it's still going to be a bit tricky to keep the ball safe, except <laughs> he's caught the ball on the saurus. So. It's going to be really tricky now, having to try to leap in for a one day, so. As you can see here, Hoyley Boy taking no chances with a cage. The opposite of me, I was I was a bit of an idiot when I had the, when I had a great spot. Um, he's really making it hard for uh, the coach to do anything. I guess he's waiting for the tree to root and then we'll move around. So now turn 11 and he's actually just gone back and this is the thing, he doesn't have to score does he? So he can just go out of range of the stripper, he's 1-0 up. He can wait for the uh, the Wood Elves to kind of commit and then he's got the handoff option and he's also just got like, you know, being really safe. I, I like this, I, like, I actually like this play of just sitting on the 1-0. A lot of people would go for the 2-0 there, um, but he's sitting on the 1-0. Again, making it really safe. 
But having said that, it's not really safe, is it? That's a one dice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, GFI. So this is a one dice. So after saying he's keeping it really safe, he's actually got this guy in the wrong place here. He doesn't go for it. He goes for a dodge round. Oh, well, he rolled a double one there, but I think... Although this looks super safe, it really wasn't. There was a, there was the Vegas chance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, GFI. It's obviously a leap from here to here. You'd have had the one dice with block and strip. I think that was that was the play of that turn. Obviously, the double one into KO would have uh, would have stopped anything, and you know he'd have got hit with the with a Crocs or whatever. So you know it'd have been pretty bad. But I think that was the play there. I think he left the leap on there actually. Guard wouldn't have done anything. And this player wouldn't do anything, so... Yeah, there, w there was a chance. But now without the uh, without the Strength 4 Stripper, it's... Uh, trees down. I mean, that looks out for the count for the coach. So yeah, just passing turns till turn 16. And Hoi Boy gets in. Touchdown on the Saurus. Very happy. And... Yeah, that was uh, that was something, wasn't it? Incredible getting the catch on the Saurus. That was huge because obviously failing the pickup would have been bad times for him. And uh, yeah, surviving the surviving the the, ch the small chance that he had. I mean, you, you know, it's that's not really a mark against Harley Boy. The fact that he left that leap on at the end of the day, it is really hard to protect the ball against a, a, a strength four. Leaps, <laughs> leap strip ball <laughs> guy, you know, it's, um, it is really hard. And obviously now he doesn't even care if he gets a one turn, so you can put the, the journeyman skink on the LOS. And probably the one star player point on the skink. I'm surprised he put the crocs on the LOS. Has he still got a apple? I still would have just put the, uh, the one SPP skink. I guess this is, I don't know. One player, you could say. There's a one turner here. I don't know if you go for it. Movement nine, I guess he might as well. <laughs> might he blow one skink and then, and then try to score me? And is he even worth it? That's the question, isn't it? Probably not. Just get a completion, get the level for him, and then try and hurt some skinks. That was the tree. Ah, oh, interesting. I thought the tree would have punched the uh, crocs and the dancer would have hit the skin. The dancer did hit the skin. And casting. But yeah, I would have saved the tree hit for the uh, 2D on the crocs. He's got the blitz. Is he going to foul the crocs? Oh, he's not going to get the chance. <laughs> Double Scott. Well, I guess that sums up the game for for the coach. Really, that double one was crucial, wasn't it? That was the that was the biggest thing. Um, four dodges, two two, boneheads, five one. So kept the didn't activate the crocs very much. That's good. Twenty five, fifteen, fourteen. So horrible dice. Uh, Eleven, sorry. 25, 15, 11. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> More skulls and both downs than powers and power pushes combined for Oily Boy. Awful. But two double skulls, a triple both down. Double skulls there, but it didn't matter. Skulls and both downs. I guess if you've got block, it's not so bad. But really, all these... Pu wow, there's so many skulls. That's crazy. Um... The coach 26, 18, 8. <laughs> even, even worse. 8 combined. Twice as many skulls as powers combined. What a crazy game. All these skulls and both downs. That's really crazy. Unbelievable. Um, and yeah, the, the Dodgers, 64%. So that, that is really bad anyway. But yeah, the double one from the war dancer who knocked himself out and the crucial double one for the score. You know, maybe he would have lost 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-
been 2 1 grinded if he'd uh, scored that time, but you don't know, do you? Um, so there you go. So a bit of a shocker there. Next up, it's Skyrider CBB, coached by Muppetillo, versus 16 turns of headache, coached by Skulls. Okay, so it starts with a blitz. And um, a blitz for Skulls. And Skulls has Zara the Slayer, so he's obviously down a fair amount of TV. And he gets a mighty blow blitz. That's a pretty good start for him, isn't it? Uh, Muppetillo's team's all about the Clawpom. Clawpom Wolf, which could win this game by himself, couldn't he? But this is a tricky start. Getting blitzed like this. Oh. This is going to put him under a lot of pressure, this drive. You would think. He's got a blood step sure hands. But he's not even getting the blitz with a claw palm because he's having to protect the ball and uh, take the only hit he can make, basically. Doesn't want to get frenzy trapped. This is very tricky for him, isn't it? One dice block before the pickup. Double skulls. Oh man, he's he's lucky. <laughs> he's lucky that dwarves are the slowest team in Blood Bowl. Well, apart from Sages Undead team. Um, because if this was a real team, he'd be under horrific pressure. As it is, the dwarves can barely get there to do anything, can they? Oh, I don't like that follow. Because this guy could have gone one, two, three, four, five, got, got in. It's double GFI to hit the wolf. And he would have needed that guy to GFI in as well. So yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? He just doesn't have he doesn't have the speed like against anybody else. He'd have been screwed here, but dwarves are really... They're just so slow though, aren't they? They're so slow. They're just not able to capitalise on a blitz and not even attempt at a pickup. So turn three for Muppetillo and he's just... He's managed to fight the dwarves. The dwarves haven't even come down to pressure him. And now he's gone for the sideline. Um, He's getting a hit with his claw palm. He's getting to pile on. Does nothing. But he is, he's up a player. There is the chance of a one dicer here, isn't there? Three, four, five, six, GFI. No, there's not. Not really. Could do you could just dodge. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, GFI, GFI. Yeah, he could reach for a one dice. But that seems unexciting without tackle. I don't think he can... Oh, he can block. Can he block free here? Push him into there, then pow him. I'll just chain him out. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? That was good, that was really good. Really nice play there by uh, Skulls. Chaining out the uh, tackle. Gets the power. And he GFIs. But he could have just followed, couldn't he? And then, uh, and then not G Oh, but then he didn't want to get surfed. Oh, yeah, okay. So he had to GFI whatever happened to not get surfed. And there, <laughs> at the end of the half, we've got a last 
ditch desperation move by Skulls as um, Mupatillo is basically able to get back in control of the drive, run around a bit, you know, use his movement, and he's got the chance of the turn eight score. Unbelievable, Jeff. Just needs a push, doesn't he? And he gets he gets more more star player points on the on the Pommer as well if he if he makes this, which he does. He played quite well there, I think, with Attilo to uh, to avoid all the pressure, but then dwarves are slow, aren't they? So goes for the greed surf, gets a Kaz. Fair enough. He's got re rolls, and uh, he doesn't need to roll dice to score. Kickoff return there. In the second half, kickoff return doesn't do anything because he gets the high kick anyway. And it's only 10 dwarves here versus 11 necros. Didn't get that recovery back, and obviously the Kaz there. Only badly hurt, and a badly hurt ghoul as well. Hmm. So turn 11, and uh, Skulls is. Kind of getting shepherded up down a sideline a bit here, isn't he? Um, maybe he's getting to score too soon, maybe? This seems a bit not an ideal spot for him. Down two play down another player as well. So maybe he's got the score early here. But he's not in he's not in range and he's just it's, it's tight, isn't it? I don't like this based, based cage here. <laughs> Everyone in a nine-man square, basically, and then trying to one-dice power a flesh golem. Um, he's getting into some trouble here, isn't he? Skulls. So he does get the two dice on the ball, thanks to the flesh golem facing the cage. And um, yeah, that's a that's a pretty nice scatter, isn't it? For Muppetillo. Gets to basically flesh goal and put a few guys. This could be a this could be a 2-0 win here. So now somehow <laughs> Skulls has managed to get the ball back. And there's a bit of an elf screen here. Two dice blitz, dodge through all the tackle zones. He's got edge four. And he makes all the rolls! 1-1! One, one. So, um, Mupatillo needs a one-turn touchdown or a riot. And it's a quick snap. So... This still isn't... This isn't the best one turn setup I've ever seen. Because how does he get around this side? Like he gets the touch back though. Like there's no easy way of getting the first block. If if he'd had somebody here who could have quick snap to there to get the block, that would have made a lot more sense. So yeah, he's gotta block somebody first. Fair enough. Three dice is pretty good. And another three dice. You think you should have moved this guy first? One, two, three, four. Oh, he's in range anyway, though. Oh, yeah, he didn't need the last push, fair enough. And then he uses the blitz to get through without dodging. Wow. 
Wow, one turner to win it from the wolf. Very good. Very good, that wasn't it. Um, yeah, obviously the quick snap meant you only needed two, two more pushes and that was really easy, wasn't it? So yeah, you got the dice he needed. Well done. Brilliant being able to use the blitz uh, to, to blitz through. Very good. And uh, both both sides made a lot of AV breaks there. Um, more blocks for the dwarves, unsurprisingly, and uh, did a bit more damage. And let's have a look. Nothing, nothing outrageous there. 26, 31, 38, so quite good block dice. Um, 39, 32, 33, all right. Uh, 16 GFIs and made 15 of them, that's pretty good, isn't it? And uh, not great dodges, but yeah, mostly just a great one turn, wasn't it? Very, very well done f from uh, Muppetillo. And what a fantastic one turner that was, eh? Unbelievable. Um, so try, trying to top that, we have Puppy with his Orcs of Letters versus Wayne Farah with Wolverine Wraiths. Right, so the game starts with cheering fans. Uh, Puppy won the kickoff and chose to receive. And yeah, it's a very scary team, isn't it? I found out firsthand just how scary. He's got loads of guard, loads of strength. Hasn't got that much mighty blow, actually. Um, he's only got the two, three mighty blow and a pom. So it's still it's still enough for all mighty blow hits. He's, he's gone for the doled setup of not actually hitting with mighty blow, which uh, is interesting, isn't it? I don't, I don't get that. I would always max mighty blow hits, but there you go. And um, Wayne Farah, I don't know, his, his dogs don't have mighty blow. That's the thing, isn't it? Although Edge is quite nice and Blodge Tackle is quite nice, he's got Mighty Blow on the wrong guys, basically. He need, he need for this match, <laughs> what he needs is to blitz this guy in Kazim, and then next turn, blitz this guy in Kazim, then next turn, blitz this guy in Kazim, and stuff like that. And if that doesn't happen, um, he's going to get battered by all of the guard and strength and Mighty Blow. So turn four, Puppy's got the ball. Very safe, um, he's made a couple of removals, and yeah, just just choking out Wayne Farrell with the strength in the guard. Three dicing people, pretty brutal, everyone's in a little square there. So turn six, there's a, there's a zombie out. Where is he? Only badly hurt. Piling on a wolf there, does nothing. So he's he's <laughs> what he's done is he's he's left the strength five next to the wolf just taunting him because it's two dice uphill. I think maybe he should have gone one square away just to make him dodge to hit. Um, but you know an up, uphill blocks one in nine, isn't it? And he's got a river. Oh, he's got the wizard as well. Oh, that's it's pretty dangerous with the wizard, isn't it? I should have looked at the inducements earlier. So that's the wizard. And he's got the edge four to run away, but he's got no one to pass it to, but he could punt it. I think he wants a long punt, doesn't he, with a reroll? Oh, he doesn't punt it. Oh, oh, I think, I think maybe if he cared about the result and <laughs> maybe about his dog as well, maybe he should have punted that because He's gonna get two dice, didn't want another two dice from this this guy, presumably. Um, he can jump up with him, run round and two dice and further two dice probably. Let's watch it for a little bit, see what happens. Ah, he gets the gets the safety back. Just go straight in with a with a black orc. I think what I would have done is uh, basically try to make sure of it by blitzing him with a palm. Blitz with a palm and then push him into into the uh, lineman for the follow up block. 
I think that would have maybe been better. And he's going to have to GFI again though, isn't he? Just because he's, <laughs> he's an orc thrower. <laughs> Three, four, five, only just in range. Wow. Windfair has got a reroll, so he can uphill this and maybe, maybe knock him over. You're telling me there's a chance? Oh, he doesn't even go for it. Fair enough. I mean, fair enough. You know, there's not. It's not that important to stop a score. He, he had he had a really low chance. If it was the World Cup. I'm sure he'd have gone for a for a uphill, uphill into an uphill. But yeah, fair enough. Just go for blocks. Oh yeah, and then get him in the way. But still, it's getting him pommed. I think. <laughs> I mean, I played Puppy's team, and I did just lie everybody down because <laughs> I didn't want anyone to be well, anyone else to be killed, and was otherwise going to be. But this is just giving up a pom hit here. Um, again, could have come round to get the the follow up hit from the uh, Black Hawk. So a little bit, a little bit sloppy, I think, because that that could have absolutely come from the other direction. Because a push here is good, actually. But I would have still wanted to hit the wolf more. Um, so, yeah, my way was greedy, actually. My way was greedy. I would have wanted to hit the wolf again. He, he was just going to do enough to get the score. So that's absolutely fair. I don't like making these blocks without GFIs. Again, different because it's the first half. And, um, you know, it's, it's not super important the result. But uh, I'm sure, I'm sure if it was the playoffs, he wouldn't be making the blocks. So yeah, got got a huge chasm on the wolf there as well. So now both wolves are out. Okay, so second half, we start with a perfect defence. Oh god, that's the last thing you need against this orc team. <laughs> oh no, the wall of strength and guard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, his wolf came back, but that's brutal, isn't it? Only one wolf, and not a mighty blow wolf. Still has 11 players, but this is a this is a scary orc team, isn't it? And the last thing you want is for them to get a perfect defence. Well, no, actually, the last thing you want is a blitz. Which is a perfect defense with with an additional mighty blow hit, <laughs> but um, yeah, pretty bad. Oh man, and a double skulls. Oh, this is this is going great for Wayne Fair, isn't it? He's about having probably as much fun as I had against Puppy. And on turn ten, <laughs> the ghoul's getting hit with mighty blow tackle. The ghoul with a ball. So we've, had, we've got a big ball sack. And... Yeah, it's basically... It's basically game over now, isn't it, really? Um, unless something crazy happens. This this org team is... is something else. You know, there's really less coming back against orcs like this than there is against Chaos, because at least Chaos have got armor eight on everybody, and you can kind of like do something to them to fight back. But here, everyone's got block. <laughs> He's got armor nine on everybody. Loads of strength. It's it's just outrageous. There's just like no hope. Is there? Zero hope against orcs. So on turn twelve. Um, Again, everyone's kind of locked down. I, I don't like running up the points so much because I, f I feel like what you want to do is not take a random Kaz from like a stupid random block or whatever. I guess you're going to take them anyway. Depends, but I, I, I don't know. I think in those situations, I, I much prefer to keep the other guy, the other guy's team on the floor with no hope. But, you know, sometimes it is good to run up the score, isn't it? I'm not saying it's wrong to run up the score. Um... But yeah, that, that's just me. 
you know, that's just me. I, I, depends. It's easy to say. That, that's how I should play, I think. But, I, you know, rush of blood and that. It's hard not to go for a 3-0 sometimes, isn't it? And turn 14. The, uh, the undead drive has been completely collapsed. <laughs> Two dice on the ball with mighty blow tackle. And the ball's loose. And Puppy's got two turns to get the 3-0. Again, bunch of players. Not not that many players down. It's just it's just such a good team. Oh, the wolf's off. So he's got no wolves, no claw. And I mean this is this is like a control team, isn't it? It's basically like a, it's basically a, a lizard man team without skinks. <laughs> it's just a Saurus team. <laughs> so strong, so much guard. Enough mighty blow. Absolutely dominating team. And probably the favourites to win the division now, I think. Now that they've got their two hardest games out of the way. Just running away. That, that was <laughs> that was my strategy. <laughs> just run. Just get away. I don't I don't like this. He blitzed the uh he blitzed the palm with his dirty player. I would have blitz one dice blitz him. I would have one dice blitz him without a block. Just on the chance of getting the knockdown so he could foul him with a dirty player. Just just for the good of the league. <laughs> nah I wouldn't. It's what I would have wanted him to have done though. Surprising well, I guess there's there's no reason he doesn't want to take out the good players now, does he? Now that once you've beaten somebody in the league, you kind of want them to win the rest of their games. So in a way, you want to take out their worst players to to leave them with a good chance. Like you know, he wants he wants Wayne Ferret to kill my uh, my claw palms and stuff with his dirty player, doesn't he? So he doesn't want to kill the dirty player now. So that was a good good choice of blitz there. And yeah, three 0 win. Um, absolutely brutal. Twenty one AV breaks to six. <laughs> <laughs> and MVPs, we even get a, a level four Black Orc out of it. Uh, one short for Wayne Farrow there, but um, 67 blocks. That's an outrageous amount of blocks in 16 turns. And uh, anything, anything leap out here? Not really. Wake up after KO, but bad dodges. And 26, 38, 24, so loads of pushes, hardly any pals. And 47, 43, 51. <laughs> so lots of pals, but yeah. That, that was just a massacre, wasn't it? Absolutely, absolutely dominant performance by Puppy there. Some more brutal domination there from by Puppy. And uh, next up, it is the Memeland Bashers, coached by Ramhard, versus Professor Paresthesia's Pets, coached by Keji Roos. Thanks for that name. So it starts with changing weather. That's very good. Um, Keji Roos won the toss and chose to receive with his necromantic team there. And as you can see, he's got a ridiculous wolf. Jump up, claw palm tackle, block. Unbelievable wolf. Um, the rest of the team unspectacular. But, I mean, not bad, just not completely amazing. Doesn't live up to the wolf. Uh, meanwhile, Ramhard's chaffs are uh, very scary. There's so much mighty blow. Um, And he doesn't dare pile on because of the dirty player as well. There are only 11 players for the Chorks and 14 for the Necro. So I better be on the Necro here for sure. we we'll turn two for the Meanland Bashers and they've got two dice on the ball. With strip, a strip ball. A strip ball, uh, ball. Um. That's something else, isn't it? Wow. Um, they've made, they've killed a, they've killed a uh, white, and I guess this guy is regen. Um, 
And yeah, they haven't taken any damage. And they're just... Oh, a frenzy trap. It's... Uh... It's something, isn't it? They're, they're just getting battered. I mean, I don't know if they haven't knocked anyone over or whatever. I mean, this... This shouldn't be happening, should it? This is dom dominance by the chorf so far. Turn four, the, the the bulls got it. There's a big line of men. And yeah, this is, there's another Kaz. <laughs> Just a badly hurt. But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's just nothing. There's nothing for Kejiru to do here, really, is that This is looking very, very bad for him. Oh, a huge double one. A huge double one there for uh, it going for it. And this, this break tackle guy can make a block out to free him and then four, five, six, seven, eight, so... It's gonna, although, although the wolf had got away with the ball, he's about to get stripped by a, <laughs> by a bull. Oh, irrelevant block first. Oh, I hate, I hate those. I hate those irrelevant block for, blocks first. But he gets the strip. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant, a strip ball. I mean, that really is meme land, isn't it? A strip ball ball is... I'm, I don't think I've ever seen one in my life before. Oh my god, Kaz from the Mighty Blow. That's a mine strength. And no regen. So that's um, a dead white and a minus strength flesh goal. And there's bad times for Keji Roos, isn't it? Well, the half-ended nil-nil. Um, Ramhard f took a took a Kaz, just a badly hurt and a KO. We've got nine um, versus ten, but now down to nine as he as he smashes the ankle. <laughs> no regen, death, no regen, minus strength, no regen. Just a badly hurt on the other wall. Another Kaz. <laughs> oh my god, this terrifying team. So it's unbelievable. This Necro team started with 14 players. <laughs> and now it's got 9 left on the pitch. <laughs> 8. 8 left on the pitch. Wow. Now we can claw on. You can pile on right now if you want. Even right next to a dirty player. <laughs> it's a little bit greedy, that isn't it? It's a little bit greedy. That could uh, that could cost him the life of his of his little chorf. Okay, so turn thirteen for Ramhard. And is he going to do a handoff in the end? I don't know why this bull sent us in the end zone. Um, I guess because he wants to hand off to him and he wants to score this turn. Wow, that's pretty greedy. I think he probably should have gone for the handoff on a different turn. Because um, <laughs> that could have actually gone wrong, couldn't it? Three times out of eight. Well, three times out of 16 or three times out of 32. That doesn't seem so bad. But there was a, ch <laughs> there was a chance of the ball going in the crowd there, which uh, would have been horrible. Gets a couple of KOs back. All the Kaz there. Unbelievable. And send off. Five Kaz and a send off. And uh, yeah, it looks like Ramhard's going for the 2 0. Four turns left, three, six, seven, eight players for the Necro. Unlikely to be able to do much, especially as he just wants to protect really all of them from this, <laughs> this horrible bashing team. But he's only got he's only got nine players, hasn't he? So it's it's crazy that that Ramhard only has eleven players on his team. Like his, his team's completely terrifying. But then, you know, he's only got eleven men, so anyone's got a chance against him, really, if they get a bit of luck. 
perfect defense all men's they are from meme land the meme land bashers they're going for the all men's LOS so could uh, this guy could get served couldn't he do you uphill and then try to surf him or even one dice him with that and then, oh, he just hasn't got enough men has he because if he gets the push there I would have one diced him and then run around and tried this. Try to uphill surf. <laughs> He's out of rerolls and he double skulls instead. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I wouldn't have tried for the surf with no rerolls. But, um, oh. Instead, he delivers the ball. He delivers the ball to the bull center and double skulls himself. Brilliant. Alright, turn 16. I can't see. Score for either side here. There is a Kaz, but just a badly hurt. And yeah, just a just a mishmash in the middle there. Um so yeah, badly hurt there, badly hurt there. And a dead white. A minus strength flesh golem, so a dead flesh golem. He was just badly hurt. A dead zombie, but who cares about the zombie? Um that was a an absolutely brutal match. <laughs> So yeah, 20 heavy breaks to 11. More blocks, loads of injuries. That was the key thing, wasn't it? Just so many injuries. And and Apple, uh, not Apple fails, regen fails. Uh, good, good GFIs from the Bulls. Good dodges from everybody. And some GFIs. Let's have a look at the block dice. 30, 27, 28. So pretty much average. 39, 32, 41. So not many pushes. A um, lot of skulls, but re-rolling a dub skull there. But uh, yeah, well, well done to well done to Ram Hard. And uh, there you go. A scary, scary chalk team there. And another scary team in, in this division is Team Fantastic, coached by Jimmy Fantastic. Uh, and they are taking taking on Lizards from Dimension X, coached by Gren Drake. All right, so we start off with a riot, which is doesn't matter a whole lot. And uh, I won the toss, chose to receive with my chaos versus Gren Drake's Lizard Men. Now, as you can see, I've got I've got two claw palm. Um, oh, get a KO. Uh, two claw pom warriors, a claw mighty blow beast man, a claw mighty blow other beast man. So there's really going to be, you know, either claw works and I murder him, or claw doesn't work and he murders me because I can't, you know, I've got no tackle versus the eight guys with dodge, um, two of which have blodge. Um, but then he's got no way to stop his lizard men getting hit, his Saurus and his Croxigore getting hit, so it really is just almost all down to the dice this game. If I roll well, it'll be an easy win, and if I don't roll well, I haven't got much chance, is, is basically how this entire game pans out. And two KOs and a Kaz. Is rolling pretty well <laughs> off the first four blocks there. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great start, isn't it? Got caught the caught the kick off as well. So yeah, absolutely couldn't have started better than that really for me. Guard to protect the claw palm, who didn't get the pile on and make himself safe. So yeah, this was this was about as good as it could have started. Just to badly hurt that, that Kaz. And then he kills the warrior, which was disappointing to say the least. I appled that and it worked. So I was lucky to get the apple, but you know, he's still down. He's only down two players here. And he decides to uh, to turn tail and run, which you know it, it's it's understandable. Um, he could have probably still tried and, and played only down two players, but you know obviously my my team is absolutely terrifying, 
especially when you've got no bad players that you can use to protect um, your team. Oh, you rolled a one there because it was a great tackle. So yeah, you know, it is a terrifying team when you can't protect um, anybody. This is a good. This is a good move here. I like. I like this move that I did here. He had guard. I had. I put an assist in, even though I already had guard here, which was, you know, not great. But never mind. And then yeah, chain him in for an extra block. From, from the claw palm, it was, it was all right, wasn't it? Now, the thing was because he because he ran away with his skinks and just didn't try to fight me. Um, I made a foul and got sent off and uh, took a heal but yeah I was mostly able to just cage the ball easily and you know made made another Kaz just uh, just to badly hurt again and only two Kaz so you know I'm sure he cares more about the state of his team than, than winning or losing a match and certainly it's not he's not losing the match he could have lost the match by trying to stop me scoring and having you know more players die so I think he did use the right strategy of just uh of just abandoning abandoning defense there you know trying to protect his players as much as he could and as it happened he only took two cars which is you've got to say that's quite quite all right isn't it this guy can recover from ko and then he's starting the second half with um 10 players could it be three one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah ten players that's about as much as he could have asked for um, I could have tried to stop the one turn but didn't bother because I thought it's it's not that easy for for lizard men to get the to get the pushes uh, to get the pushes to get the touchdown just because just because they've got it, they can't really pass it although he's got he's got the sure hands they can't really pass it to the other one so he's he's got to basically get the kick close enough so he can do a handoff. And he's agility three, and that's so why I just thought make and make dodges and see what happens. Goes for the whole route here, which um, is absolutely terrible in my opinion. Um, particularly. Particularly with this movement uh, nine skink with, with sprint, he just needed one push, so he could have done that push on the first push, and it would have been a pal, uh, and it would have been all right. And he goes for the four plus pass rather than double GFI, uh, but fails the catch. So yeah, that was. I really didn't like his one turn attempt there. I, I hate using the whole method unless you've got no choice, and uh, he did have enough players that he. He didn't have to use the whole method. Um, this guy actually doesn't come back, so it's looking pretty bad, actually, with eight players. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, no, he's got nine. Well, nine versus 11, yeah, it's looking pretty bad for him. Obviously, rule of five. Worst guys on the front line. And, uh, I, I thought about subbing off the block for a rookie, but then didn't. Yeah, that's, that's this is. I mean, this is a horrible amount of claw mighty blood. You know, no lizard man wants to play against this team. But then, you know, on another day, I wouldn't have made as many removals. And he can still probably play here. I still need. I still need to make more removals and not have my uh, beastmen removed. But he he did keep his skinks deep, which meant that I was able to uh, initiate a lot of contact. Uh, made another removal, and yeah, it's looking it's looking not good for him. Failed to dodge and KO'd himself. <laughs> you know, he could have he could have left him left him lying down there, but you know, obviously that's unlucky. You know, he didn't have he didn't really have any <laughs> any good luck to be fair in this game. But you know, there's still a chance of him getting the touchdowns and stuff. So I still got a still got a three dice blitz this guy. And uh, but yeah, I think maybe he was a bit too passive on defense. Maybe he should have tried a quick score, got back up to ten players. It might have done all right, maybe. But um, 
Yeah, obviously I want to hit with block on this guy, seeing as he doesn't have block. It'll happen eventually. Probably this one. So I replace the safety first. Very good. Leave, a, leave the rookie mark in the crops. Get it all down and another cast. And now it's really looking really horrible for him. But he's, you know, I've got no tackle, so he can still run around with his skinks. And yeah, he, he ran around with his skinks for a while, but eventually he wasn't able to stop three dice on the ball. Another Kaz. Just badly hurt though. All of the. I'll miss next game. None of them were perms there. None, none of the Kaz were perms here. They were all just badly hurt. I'll miss next game. A bunch of KOs. Got, get the ball. Um, he's had pretty good odds of getting me there with a 5 plus dodge. I probably shouldn't have left such an easy, such an easy chance on. So yeah, this is pretty much the end of the match. I could have actually surfed this king, but of course, went for a blitz on the crocs to get star player points. Um, and <laughs> and Kaz did miss next game. So yeah, he ended up with, with you know loads of Kaz, loads of KOs. And, uh, and I don't think he needed to bother to stand him up really. Could have still gone for a uphill on the ball. And you know, might have worked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, double. Oh no, he couldn't. I was out of range. Badly hurt himself on the dodge. I summed up his day, really. So, yeah. Really lucky overall. But, you know, although it was really lucky, it also wasn't that lucky, you know? Because there's a decent chance with, with two Claw Pom and a bunch of Claw Mighty Blow, um, it can spiral, you know, badly out of control. It happens, uh, it happens sometimes, doesn't it, you know? 17 AV breaks of 26 blocks <laughs> and then those 17 AV breaks being 10 removals is obviously it it was really lucky you know don't get me wrong there was no there was no skill involved in me rolling well um but you know 28 uh, tw 28 17 20 so actually bad bad block dice um, nearly as many skulls as pushes and 14 8 10 so bad bad block dice for him but yeah, that's it. There was there was no skill involved in that game. It was just purely claw fired. Um, much as the claw didn't get the chance to fire against Puppy, it could have done. You know, if I'd played Puppy and I'd made a, a Kaz and two KOs on the first turn like that, I would have probably smashed him to pieces. But you know, that's just the way that that's how I built my team, and and that's it. It works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. When it works, you get an easy game. When it doesn't, you get a hard game, and that's that. Well, that was a hammering and a half, wasn't it? Uh, let's have a look at the table. And as you can see, the coach and Muppetillo joint top, 3-1-1. One, one. Um, there are only 13 players in the division, uh, thanks to somebody quitting. So, this is, it's, it's good that it, it, it's all on one page. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Puppy's probably got his two losses out of the way. And uh, Hindi's struggling with his team wrecked. It's 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 shaping up to be something, isn't it? Um, I could have been three one one if I if I'd made that foul against the coach, but never mind. And yeah, it's 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 shaping up. We're getting there, nearly halfway through the season, and uh, very interesting. And that's all. So thanks for watching. Don't forget leave a like and subscribe. Watch next week and stay fantastic.